Okay. So what are peripheral devices? Now, in English, when I say something is on the periphery, means that thing is on the edge. That thing is on the 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 edge of the 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 the, the boundary of the the organization. That thing is not on the main stage, but that thing is on the edge of it. That thing is on the periphery of it. So the periphery or the peripherals are devices that are on the edge of your computing device. They are the devices that we use or that are placed not by, not in your PC, but are connected to your PC to give it input and output for you to give output to a particular user or you to bring data into a particular system. That is what we use the peripheral devices for. So in your computing system or in the organization of a computer, there are two main parts. The first main part is your, um, the first main part is your processor. The second main part is your memory modules. And the third key main part would be the periphery devices in which we'll call or refer to as our IO. So the IO devices that connect to our computer. The job of the IO devices is to bring in data for the computer to process and to take out data after the computer has processed, processed that data. So it's very important that we know that these devices are connected to the computer and they allow us to read in and read out information from and to the computer from the external world. For you to have peripheral devices, there are three main classifications of peripheral devices. The first classification is the human readable. The second classification is the machine readable. And the last communication, the, the last um, category is the communication. So the human readable, what is it? Communicating with the computer users, e.g. video, display terminal, and printers. So the human readable allows the computer to communicate with the external environments that it finds itself in. The next one is the machine readable. The machine readable allows you to input data into the computer for the computer to be able to read. The next one is the communication. The communication allows you to transfer or to exchange information over a network. So here we will find the modem, we will find the, inter, inter, uh, uh, the network interface cards that we use to give on information. Over here, we have a diagram. <clears throat> the diagram here shows you the basic structure of a peripheral device. So we have the control unit here. We have the buffer here that we use to store information. We have the transducer over here, which we use to connect to the outside environment. And of course, over here, we have the bit signals and the IO signals that we use to transfer data onto the computer. Are there any questions at this point? Are there any questions at this point? No, at, this, at this stage of our careers, again, I want to re restate this, that we see, we always assume that we come to school with friends. We don't. We come to school as an individual. We make friends and our friends help us grow. If you have questions, it is now, 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 that you ask. You don't wait for later. Don't make that mistake. Ask the question now. Get the solution now. Your friends will laugh at you. But one day, one day, when you are rich, they won't laugh at you. They will come to you and beg you. And remember you of the time they were laughing at you. So if you have a question, no shame, you ask. Yes, Mr. Mills Howard, what is your question? 
Um, sir, please can you go over the categories again? I kind of like missed it. The categories are the human readable, the machine readable, and the communication. So peripheral devices are grouped into three main categories: the human readable, the the machine readable, and then the communication. The human readable, what is it? The human readable are things which are connected to the computer that they allow the computer to communicate with you, the human. So anything in which you can connect to the computer that allows the, com the computer to communicate with you becomes human readable. Anything you connect to the computer that allows the computer to communicate with itself so allows you to communicate with the computer becomes machine readable. And anything that allows the computer to connect on to a network becomes the communication. So you can see that examples for the human readable are the video display terminal, the print test, so on and so forth. For the machine readable, we have the magnetic disk, the magnetic tape sensors, actuators, that are used in robotics and so on and so forth. And also for the communication, we have the modem and the network interface card that we utilize. For those of you who are putting your index number in the chat, there's no need because the attendance has already been taken. After the first 10 minutes, then I started the class. So those who join after the first 10 minutes you are not here you are here but you are not here are you sa gana suban funa dey bia we dey bia this am bala show be che say why gym online class to the bali anyway what is this person also say that can you explain what the buffer is and what the actuator and the control logic is okay we'll see what they are once we go further into our um our lecture but for now the buffer allows you to temporarily save information in which you want to use in the computer so the buffer allows you to save information in which you want to use in the computer. For example, if I am trying to transfer information, one second. Good. So for example, if I am trying to, to transfer information, from a, 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 a one spot to another, I would use the buffer to help me to temporarily store the information. An example is this. If let's say I am connecting my pen drive to my computer, you can see that the speed of the pen drive and the speed of the computer may be different. So I would use the buffer to temporarily upload the information I have on the pen drive to it. So that after that, then I'll transfer from the buffer to the computer. So that the shortfall of the speed will not be felt by the computer, everything will be smooth. So it is technically it's like, I'm transferring at the speed of the pen drive to the buffer. Then I'll transfer from the buffer to the computer at the computer speed. The transloser is there for the conversion of electronical energy into output and to other forms of electronical input. So the Danlusa is there to take the electronical signals and change them into a form that the computer would understand. So the electronical signals that are coming from your pen drive and all of those devices, it is the translucent's job to convert them into a way that the computer is going to understand. Of course, the control logic unit is there for the I.O. module. The I.O. module would control a lot of things and we will see them when we go along, but it is there 
so that it will do all the logic in the IO module. So for the person who asked the question, Mr. Derrick, those are the explanations for them. Examples of input devices. Input devices. Examples of input devices. Input devices in which we have are the keyboard, the optical input devices, the magnetic devices, and the screen input devices. Over there, you can see examples of them. When I say optical devices, I'm talking about your optical mouse, your bar reader, barcoders, digitizers, so on and so forth. When we talk about the magnetic input, we are talking about your hard drives, anything that has a magnetic strip, your barcode readers, sorry, the, the, the card, the card readers and all of those things that have magnetic strips in it. Those are examples. And over here, when we say the screen input device, then we are talking about your touch screen, your light pad and your mouses and so on and so forth. These are all examples of input devices. When we say output devices, then we are talking about the punch cards, we are talking about monitors, we are talking about printers, we are talking about plotters, we are talking about analogs, we are talking about voice control modules that sends things on speakers and so on and so forth. These are all examples of output devices. Are there any questions on what output devices are? If there are no questions on what output devices are, then let's look at IO slash modules. What are IO modules? IO modules are interfaces to the system bus or central switch, and also interfaces and controls to one or more peripheral devices. Best thing I can do is use the diagram here to explain the IO module. The IO module, if you can see my cursor, it's going round sits in between the bus lines and then the peripheral devices. The peripheral devices connect to the I.O. module through the interface. The interface, for example, is your the place in which you connect your pen drive for it to connect to the computer, that port, the adapter port, that is the interface. So for example, the HDMI, the place you plug it is the interface for HDMI. The place you plug the Type C cable in your computer is the interface for your Type C cable. All of these things are interfaces in which you use to connect to your various devices. So back onto here, the I/O module sits between the bus lines which connect to the memory or the CPU and your I/O devices. Why does the I/O module sit here? What is the job of the I/O model? Why does the I/O model sit between your devices and the bus lines that connect it to the CPU? Now they sit there for a variety of reasons. One of them is this: they are a wide variety of reasons. Is it this place? One second. Yes, there are a wide variety of peripherals which with various methods of operation, it would be empirical to incorporate the necessary logic within the processor to control a range of devices. Now, each and every single peripheral device that connects to the computer is different. We have monitors, we have uh, some are inputs, some are outputs. We have monitors, we have keyboards, we have the mouse, we have your pen drive, we have your uh, camera, you have your dash cam, you say dash cam, the camcorder, we have your speakers, we have various devices which connect to the computer. That's number one. That's if we make a direct line from here to the CPU, it means that there has to be something in the CPU that would identify what you have connected and how it should relate to it. 
you realize that this job becomes too much for the CPU. Because the CPU has to worry about the general maintenance and processing of algorithms by the computer. Now, I have to also worry about what you have connected, how you have connected it, what it is doing, and so on and so forth. So that job is being taken away from the CPU. And we are giving it to the I.O. model. So the I.O. model will handle all the devices that are connected, what is connected for, how it is going to be used, so on and so forth. It is also going to handle the status of the device. Has the device been connected? Is it ready for data transfer? Is it not ready? Is it being paused? Has someone done something to the device? All of those information are kept by the I.O. model so that at the request of the CPU, it can hand over those requests so that it can do the job you can do. Also, because of the positioning of the I.O. model, it means that if there is any device, for example, I connect a, a, a mouse, the I.O. model can identify that it's a mouse and identify the things in which it requires. If I connect a keyboard, the I.O. model would identify it as a keyboard and all the things that it requires. So the I.O. model, irrespective of what you are trying to connect, it will take it, it will process it, and it will act accordingly to what it is supposed to do. Also, as I said, there are cases whereby if you are transferring data to a peripheral device or from a peripheral device, the speed of the peripheral device would be different from the speed of your computer. So in those cases, we want a situation whereby there would be a buffer to handle the speed in differences. So like the example I was given, if I'm transferring a movie from my pen drive to the computer, to the computer, or I'm transferring a task from my pen drive to the computer, what I am going to do is transfer it into the buffer. The buffer is going to take it and then start transferring it onto the computer. Why would that happen? Because the speeds are different. So instead of me dealing with something that is very fast, I should deal with something that is on my level and allow that thing to go and deal with the thing that is what? Fast. So technically, I will transfer the thing to the buffer at my speed, then the buffer will transfer it to the computer at the computer's speed. Hence, there will be no problem of us having different speeds and us not being able to communicate very well and transfer files very well. All of us will work within our speeds and have the best results in which we want. Yes, Isaac Yeboah. Yeah, please. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, uh, I wanted to ask where the, the buffer is placed. Is it also on the CPU? The buffer? Yes, in terms of the I.O., it is kept inside the I.O. module. So technically, it is like the input-output module is the CPU for the distribution of things over the I.O., that is the input and output. So it has its own CPU, and its job or its name is called the I.O. module. So inside the I.O. module, there is a buffer over there. Is that OK, Mr. Yeboah? That's OK. Thank you. So, I.O. module has two very, very important functions in which it is supposed to perform. Very, very important functions it is supposed to perform. What are these functions? Interface to the processor and memory via the bus lines, and then interface to one or more peripherals by tailored data links. So its job is to sit between the CPU and the I.O. device and they all connect to it via the bus lines or the interface data lines that connect from your computer. Is that clear? With that in mind, what are the functions of the I.O. module? What job does the I.O. module play? It first one, it does control and timing. I've explained this to detail, but the I.O. model is there to make sure that there is a correct control of traffic 
of resources they are being spent at the time they have to be spent and at the rate in which they have to be spent. It is also there to control the status of various devices. For example, if the CPU needs to display something, it is the I.O. who is going to check if the output device is ready. It can receive what the CPU wants to transmit and make sure that the bus lines that are ready for those transfers are all done and are all correct. Also, it is there for the processor communication. So I.O. module communicates with the processor, which involves command decoding, data status reporting and address recognition. So it is the IO module that will tell or carry information and decode it to the various peripheral devices. And from the per various peripheral devices, it carries data over the bus line. It carries status reports. So again, if you plug in your pen drive, your pen drive is plugged, but maybe you have a, 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 a removed it. So it can't transfer data unless you remove it and plug it again. So to tell them that, oh, it is plugged, but it can't, can't transfer data. So you don't worry about that one. It's the IO uh, uh, module that also deals with the addressing system of the computer. That's, it keeps the addresses in which the computer is going to work from. So it knows that, oh, for this information, it is in drive C. For this information, it is in drive E. For this information, you're supposed to go to this place in drive C or go to this place in drive E. It knows where all of those information are kept. Another thing it does is it does device communication. In doing device communication, it involves it sending commands and status and what? Data. Also, there is data buffering and it is used to do data buffering. Hence, we use that for data buffering too. And finally, error detection. It is its job to detect if there is an error with the I.O. device, like paper jam or bad ink or something when you're dealing with printers. It is the I.O. module that receives this information and transfers it to the CPU. Are there any questions, please? Yes, sir. Um, sir, please, with a, with a buffer. When, let's say, the computer wants to read uh, an information from the peripheral, since they have different speed, wouldn't the timing affect, let's say, the computer would have to wait for the buffer to receive the information at the rate of the peripheral before it will be transferring it to the computer? Hello, sir. Okay. So okay. it will not do that. And here's why it will not do that. Okay. If I have to transfer the information to you, information to you. Let, let, let me give you an example. Okay. Let me give you an example. So over here. I have a movie file, Osaka. I want to transfer this movie file to videos. I want to transfer it from downloads to videos, right? Oh, I can't be completed because let me copy it here. Come here and let me come and paste it over here. So in this, oh, what I want to do, I couldn't, I wasn't fast enough. Let me see if I can be fast enough again. So I want to paste it here. So where it is. Oh, okay. I want to transfer it from here to here. It didn't even bring me the thing for me to pause it to. Yeah, okay, you no problem. So let's see, I think this file is big enough. Copy. And then paste it. Will it take a long time? Good. Pause. Good. Now over here, right? We can see that I have a file that is something something megabytes around one gig, and it is transferring the data. The data is being transferred 
and this is the key point at the speed over here the green thing the speed you can see that the speed varies as it is going up and down so it goes faster goes smaller based on what it is carrying the speed will what change so the speed changes based on what it is what carrying now at the peak of the speed it was around uh, 34 megabytes per second so it means that I was transferring the data at 35 megabytes per second. Now, let's bring it into what we are doing. Your computer's pen drive port, normally when your pen drive port is blue, it means that it is transferring at 3.0 megabytes per second, or it is a 3.0 um, port, which means the speed is the highest it can be. The other port will not have that blue coloring there to be black or something, which means it's a normal port. It's transferring at 2.5 or something. That means that if I have a, 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 a high speed drive and I want to copy information, I have to plug it inside the one which is blue, that is high speed. If I go and connect it to the one which is not blue and not a high speed one, number one, it means that I am not transferring the data at the same rate as my computer. So there is a description, uh, 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 they are not in parity. The, the, the rate of my computer is higher than the rate of my device. So the problem here is this, the computer's rate, because it is very, very fast, it will start to push the data onto my drive if I'm transferring from my computer to the pen drive. And the pen drive will not be fast enough to take it. So, what the computer will do is it will start copying onto the drive, but it will copy first onto the buffer. The buffer can take the rate of the computer. When it is done, then it will start copying onto the drive. Another way it can do this is also copy onto the buffer and the drive at the same time so that the drive will be picking from the buffer whilst the other the computer will be giving to the the buffer, that's the, the speed or the illusion will be that they are running at the same speed, but they are not. The buffer is there so that because you are fast, you give it to me. And because the other one is slow, I'll work at his own word, pace. So it means that both of them, because they are working at different paces, I will have to have a middle ground there so that you can give to it and then it will be transferred, translated to the next one. Or, or I don't know what practical example I can use to describe this, but the idea is that if I am too fast for you, why don't I give it to someone who is at my same speed? Then whilst I'm giving to that person, that person can give it to you at your speed so that I and you don't have to clash because we are working at different speeds. I, I hope that explains the point to you. Mr. John, and also Mr. John, you should also uh, realize that the speed at which this is done is done at a very, very alarming speed. And nowadays, the way computers are built, if you if you watch even the um, if you watch um, the new Mac, for example, you realize that. When they are building them, they separate the I.O. And they tell you and they go on a long halabaloo about I.O. and I.O. processing and all of those things. The reason they do all that is because now the I.O. devices, they have like three gig I.O. device and then you have an eight gig computer running and software, two gig I.O. device and you have a, a, a 16 gig computer or probably you have an eight gig I.O. device and a 32 gig computing device. The I.O. devices have huge spaces now so they can take whatever you are giving to it. Also, they are fast memory, which means the speed is very, very high. So to your human eye, it will be slow, but the space at which we are doing it, it really, really has insignificant effect. Unless your computer is boom, that one there, you will feel it. You will feel the pain. If you are using four gig, and, you know, Charlie, Charlie, like Pentium, then that level there you will feel. But we who are using the i3, i5, i7, 
you know, 16 gig, 8 gig, you know, we will survive. We will survive. So, Mr. John, I hope that explains to you. That's it. Thank you very much. I can't hear you do, but I think it does. Yes, sir. Sir, please. It's okay now. So this is the internal structure of the I.O. module. Uh -huh. Mr. There was someone's hands up. He has gone down, so I think it's okay. So this is the internal structure of the I.O. module. You see that it has its own logical unit. It has its own interface to connect to the various peripheral devices. It has a dedicated bus line for addressing and controls. And it has a status register and a data register to hold information that come to it and allow it to process those information in a very short time. So for example, if your pen drive is doing something, it will come into the IO logic. Then the IO logic will send it to the status and control register so that it knows that, oh, if I want to use a pen drive, it is busy. So you can't copy now. When it is free, then you can what? Copy, things like that. It is here that those things are done and controlled. Any question, please? Oh, wonderful. No question. You guys, I like you guys. The way you put ask questions, Sally, eh, you're feeling rough. Feeling, feeling class. Ale? You did it. You did it. You did it. Now, back here, let's look at the I.O. bus and then the interface modules. Now, when I say interface, as I said, I'm talking about Link or the junction that you connect the device to the computer. If you are taking a pen drive, you are talking about the USB slot. The slot that is there is the interface. So you can see here that I have an interface for keyboard, an interface for uh, printer, an interface for magnetic disk, and an interface for magnetic tape. All of these things here are the physical locations that we connect the computer and the interface will take it to either the processor or the or the memory depending on where we want to go so this diagram here shows you how the io device connects to the interface and the interface connects to the bus line hmm. any questions on interface please Wonderful. Guys are the best to be. They are. The final thing we need to discuss today has to do with modes of transfer and how we can transfer information inside our or we can transfer information between the central processing unit and the IO device. So data transfer between the central computer and the IO device may be handled in a variety of modes. Some modes use CPU as the intermediate part. Other, others transfer the data directly to and from the memory unit. Data transfer to and from the peripherals may be handled in one of three possible modes. So let's see how they are handled. The first one is the programmed I.O. The programmed I.O. is described as this. Under the programmed I.O., the CPU will take information from the, or will take a program from the I.O. device Thus, it will execute it in the CPU. If I am going to execute a programming instruction, we all know that all programming instructions are handled by the ALU unit. The ALU unit is in the CPU. Hence, 
I need to move the program from wherever it is into the CPU before I can run it. The, C the information is inside the IO device. Hence, it means that I need to have a constant communication with the IO device so that I will know what next instruction I need to execute. Hence, in this scenario, the CPU and the IO device are in constant communication. They are in constant uh, 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 conversation. They are sending signals to each other constantly. If it is to transfer data to the memory or if it is to do whatever it has to do, they are in constant communication. And this constant communication is what we call polling. So polling allows us to actively ping and check the status of our IO device continuously. A good example of this, if I had a girlfriend per se, and every day I call my girlfriend on the phone, hey dear, Good morning. How are you? How are you doing? Have you eaten? Next five minutes, I'll call again. E, I miss you. So today, what are you doing? Then the next five minutes, I call again. Hey, so Charlie, today have you are you have you eaten? Yeah, you're not eating. Afternoon. What are you having for lunch? I miss you. Afternoon time. I'll call. I will call again and call again, checking on this girl's status over and over again till nightfall. What problems do you think this will bring? The girl will be overwhelmed. The girl will be tired. The girl has to spend most of her time communicating with me so she has no time to do anything else. She has no time to be involved with anything else she's doing in her life. All her time is with me. She becomes overwhelmed. She becomes pressured. She becomes tired. With that scenario, it means that I have to go with the interrupt during I.O. Because polling takes variable time in the CPU, it means that the CPU becomes overwhelmed if it is always trying to keep in constant communication with our I.O. Hence, with interrupt during I.O., I am not going to be pinging the I.O. device all the time. I would wait when the IO device needs something from me. It would send an interrupt request. Thus, I would stop whatever I am doing, listen to the request, and continue whatever I am doing. If I am going back to the scenario that I was using my fictional girlfriend, I am saying that I will not call the girl. I will not even bother her and ask her how her day was. If she needs me or she needs something from me, she will call me. I would stop whatever I'm doing. If I am lecturing you guys, I will stop. If I am in the marketplace, I will stop. I will pick the call from her. I will talk to her. When she's satisfied, I will cut the call and I'll continue with my life. So under this method, we are saying that the IO will make a request to the CPU when it is ready to make a transfer. And upon the detection of this request by the CPU, by the CPU, the CPU will stop what it is doing and handle the request for the I.O. device. The third one is saying that I don't want to involve, that is the memory-driven I.O., or memory uh, direct access um, procedure, I don't want to involve the CPU. So what I will do is that I will directly map my memory to the I.O. device and all the things the I.O. device will do. Hence, if I need something, I will directly access it from the I.O. device because they are mapped. Everything that it has to do, every job it has to do, has been mapped. There are bus lines directly for it. So when you plug something up, there's a bus line for it, handled by it. Everything has its own direct bus lines 
and we can communicate with and between the two of us using these backgrounds. I don't require the CPU to do anything. If the CPU wants something, it to contact the memory, then the memory will come and contact the IO devices. There is no problem in this scenario. Any questions? Please, can you take the direct menu access again? the direct memory access graph. Uh -huh. Under the direct memory access, we are presented with a scenario whereby the I.O. device is has direct access or is directly mapped to the memory. The I.O. device will have Direct access, direct access points to the memory. That's if the CPU requires a certain, let's say the CPU wants to pick a file from your pen drive. It has to contact the memory, then the memory would go and contact your pen drive. And why is that important? It means that the memory has been mapped directly onto your pen drive such that if it needs something from your pen drive, it has direct access to it. So the CPU will send the address of what it wants and where it wants it to the uh, memory. The memory knows where it is on your pen drive. It will go for it and transfer it directly to the CPU for it to be what? Worked on. Mm. Any questions? Wonderful. If there are no questions, class rep, I understand next week is not vision week. Next week there is class. Is that true? Is the class rep here? Class rep, are you here? Oh, class rep, I'm back. Class rep, are you here? Is there anybody here who can speak for the class rep? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, so next week is do we have class or is it revision week? Um so I think it's revision, but we could have class if you want. Oh no, it's not revision, but we can have class if you want to. Some people are saying revision week is the next week after that. Some are also saying next week. I don't know. Okay, so it's revision week. It's revision week. Are you sure? Yeah. I don't want to be in the um, house and someone will call me that you have to come to class and you didn't come. <laughs> we'll say yes, it's revision week. Mm -hmm. Oh, if that is the case, then let's have this conversation very quickly. Over here, your exam is going to be a hundred marks. So I'm going to mark everything on your paper over a hundred. You have you have section A, section B, and section C. Section A is 20 marks. Section B is 30 marks. Section C is 50 marks. Section A is objectives only. You are answering all. You are doing 20. Section B is 30 marks and you are answering three questions out of four. All of those questions are in calculation form. 
So all the calculations we have done this semester, I've put them all in the questions and you will do them in the name of the Lord. Amen. And you are doing three. Each one is 10. So if you add them all up, you get 30. Then the section C, it is writing. You are There are four questions there. You pick any two you can do and it is 25 marks. So 25 marks of your examination goes towards a, uh, your section C. Add everything up and you can see that we'll get our 100. So for you to get your 100 marks, that is how you are going to get it. Are there any comments or anything you want to ask about it? Yes, sir. We have a question. Class, there will be a question. We have a question. I wanted to ask if your own is going to be the same or we are going to get a video. I don't understand. When you record a, a Zoom, they don't I don't give you video. We have never done Zoom before. So like I'm not saying you per se, but like as as a whole. When you people do Zoom, you don't get the video. Yes, please. But you're asking if I'll give you the video. Yes, please. I'll give you the video. Thank you, sir. Okay. It's been recorded, isn't it? Yes, it is. But I'll, when we are done, I'll, I'll do it and send it to you. Any other question about the exam? Oh, hallelujah, then. Guys, as I, as I always say, you guys are the best, man. You are the best 70, 57 people I've ever had in my entire life. Yes, Mr. Boateng, what is it? Sir, can you give us some areas we should focus on, like, make a master? Nina. Oh, sir. Nina, you're a killer, so... <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, because uh, the reason I'm saying Suyanina is that I have set it in such a way that each question has everything in it. So the question wants to like the section C. In that same question, you will see cash, you will see memory, you will see interrupt, you will see this all day, each of every single one of them. So you can't run away from anything. You can't, there is no space for you to breathe. You know about, yeah, yeah, mafia. So if you don't learn, you can do two. Then the rest of the two, you leave it to the Lord. Then you won't pass. So if you learn all, all, from the history to all the videos you people did to the one I'm doing today, you are learning all, all, no area. If I give you area, I, I do your all. Best, okay, I'll send you area. Then the area I'll send, I'll send all. So that you read all. Is that okay, Mr. Boateng? Yes, I'm happy to find Oh, okay. Yes, yes, it's okay. Yes, I'm happy to find you. Uh-huh. Yes, I'm happy to find you. Yes, I'm happy to find you. Uh-huh. So, any other questions, please? If there are no questions, then we thank God. Um, one of the classes said that next week is it's not revision week. I should come and take them through the calculation questions again. Should I do the same for you or you are okay? Yes, take us through. Yeah, please take us through. Yes, yes, please take us through. Oh, Monka say you are okay. Oh, Monya Adiagra. Anyway, if there are no other questions, then. We will end the Zoom here so that the people crying about data can stop crying about data. And then we can go and do what we have to do in the day. Thank you. And the attendance to the attendance was taken and put in your group. So if your name is not there, you already know what you have. Um, hello, sir. Yes. Oh, sir, the attendance was yeah. already here, but I didn't have data. Abranti, 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 Abranti. We're already here. If you were already here, Abranti, Abranti. If you were already here, Brafuna, we use here. I was already here. If you were already here, 
Yeah, but my, my data, my yeah, data. Yeah, I understand. Like, I'm trying to understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. 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 Your network. net. Yeah, my data finish. How how your data no go finish? No, bye bye. Say my network. Say 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 say. Yeah, say. <laughs> see my data finish. Say, yes. my network, oh, oh. My, my area, your area, eh? but right now the network is good for you to say my network, my area. Mate, why? Say you see, you see the picture you sent. My network. Um, some of us we wrote our names, but we didn't add index numbers. So what should we do? Should we bring the index numbers later? Oh, oh, uh, so later, no, what the brand is saying? Yeah, basically. Like oh. Oh, the and I'm a account. So I say. So what if someone also sends me the same name and said he's Derek? What what, what do I do? I, 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 what if the other person to it takes a picture of the ID and sends to me? What do I do? The, the person doesn't have my ID, you understand? Eh. <laughs> So it means that all yeah. the people who are not in the list, they should send their name as Mr. Uh, Martin. No, no, no. You see, you see, you see in the list, in the list, uh, there was uh, me. Some some people wrote their name and then forget to yeah, yeah, their sure, index sure. now. So like I'm asking, should have you on the age? You understand what I'm saying? Oh, it's an on your job. But what I'm trying to <laughs> say is this: that if and listen to this very much, <laughs> if like someone here, he has written his name Marvin Massacre. What you are saying? Into yeah. Marvin Massacre. So, Marvin Massacre. Hello. Please be back. I'm saying that Marvin Massacre. Eh? If Marvin Massacre, and for, for the reasons beyond my comprehension, that coming for a class dinner, you have named your name as Marvin Massacre. No, yawa. If Marvin Massacre, <laughs> see, we all say that our name is Marvin Massacre. And then we all said, to me that said, please, I'm Marvin Massacre. This is my index number. And logically, that is what I will do. So all the people whose name is not on the list, they should send Marvin Massacre, ID, two, two, one, ID, Marvin Massacre, ID. So how will I know which one is which one? That is my question to you, Mr. Boate. Say, that, that's why I say you should ask for like... The um, moment you give me a sensible answer to that, Take it, everybody's name will be there. So everybody's depending on you now. Sensible answer. How do I know which one is which one? Not, I am not going to go and look for the name one by one. So how do I know? So, uh -huh. so, and let the person send you a picture of their student ID with the name and then the index number, like matching to Marvin Masakan. Okay. Maybe that's that the person's all the people name. who say like their maybe, name not their index number, they should send their student ID and then I would make that correction for them. Case closed, right? Okay. Yes, I'm being my own right now so that you see. So any other objections? Yeah. No objections? Yes, except no. please, we updated oh, them. Yes, 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 yes. yeah, so those people whose name is not there, it means that for the first 10 minutes the class started, where were you? So please, so I joined you that my date exactly to go and find the, 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 the first time, 8 minutes too. The first 10 no, minutes of the class. It was 8 when he, when he sends the pictures. So I won't yeah, so I came. Yeah. Okay, okay so the first 8 minutes of the class, where were you? Don't say you joined me, because if you joined, your name will be there. Yeah. So the first eight minutes of yeah, the class. So you do the picture you? at eleven. You let's say approximately eleven seven. It sends around eleven eight. So like the the last so that two one minutes you join the. Yes, say, the I yeah, yeah, say I was here at eleven two, but I had to go and do That's transfer there. and then bundle. That's it. So what is the transfer the bundle? That was that eleven nine. Charlie, you go and split out. You go and split out. 
And I said one more thing about the cost registration. Please, have you updated the list? Because my name was in part, and I already sent you my index number name. And the brand office, why? Now, the three days, we didn't count. We didn't count. It's no. There's a name in my career. We didn't count. We're banishing by. I remember believing. Okay, so I'll come to the office. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 May God bless you for adding all of us. <laughs> oh, yes, God bless you. I know you are here. What's the God bless you? See you, Chambers.